celebrate the power of the Spirit in creation and in us. We call it Trinity Sunday. God's connection in Jesus Christ, Jesus giving us the gift of Spirit to connect us with Him, with God, and with each other. We also come this morning bringing the worries of the world with us, the heat of this day, the ongoing struggle to stay safe and well through the COVID-19 pandemic. The elders of Bethany Christian Church have made the ethical decision to not reopen for worship until Sunday, July 12th. This is in keeping with guidelines set forth from our denominational leaders and local medical professionals. We also bring the worries of a nation angry at the killings of black people. The protests have been peaceful, but they have also been violent. We pray for the safety and peace of all of our voices that need to be heard, and we pray for change. Each Sunday, we'll, we will be adding communion to our worship via Facebook and YouTube. So I invite you to share communion with us. Prepare yourselves some bread or crackers, some juice. Gather with your family. Pray the Lord's Prayer with us. May we take some time now to pause and gather our thoughts as we enjoy a video for reflection. Our prayers for David H. and family on the death of his brother Dean. Our prayers. 
prayers for Renell W. and the family on the death of her Aunt Wilma. Our prayers for Caroline Federley and family, whose committal for Wayne will be held next week. Congratulations to Mark and Alex on their engagement and all the plans for their upcoming marriage next July. And also to Aomawa, yes, the daughter-in-law of Sharon, yes, who was just awarded tenure and teaches astronomy, astrobiology, and astrophysics. O oh, merciful and gracious God, we gather on this day to renew our mind, our body, and our spirit in this time of praise and worship. Help us to see that this world has been indeed formed and blessed by your spirit, and you continue to call it good. But, oh God, we also come in the midst of a chaotic time, seeking the gift of light. We look around in our streets, we look at our hospitals and medical facilities who are still struggling with the pandemic. We tune in to our TVs and social media and we read images and see images of hatred and death. In our daily lives, O oh God, we find it easier to think the worst of our neighbor rather than see the good of your creation in them. Yes, in this world, the forces of brokenness and destruction are rampant. But this is our Sabbath. This is the Lord's Day. And we come into your world, O oh God, and are reminded of life created by your Spirit. And we are created in your image. So help us, Lord, to see the world as you see it. Help us, Lord, to look around us and see the work of your creation and to call it beautiful. Good. Renew our spirit this day, O oh God, and forgive us our sins as we gather to give you our praise in the name of Jesus Christ and in the name of spirit we pray. Amen. The first scripture reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And 
remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and that the Holy Spirit was with Jesus from the very beginning, first entering the flesh of Mary's womb, and then being poured out on all flesh, both Jew and Gentile, at the celebration of Pentecost. As we look through the Gospel story, the Holy Spirit takes center stage in the life of Jesus from beginning to end. It's the Spirit that drives Jesus to the Jordan River to be baptized and then calls Him into the wilderness. It's the Spirit that leads Jesus from the Jordan back to His hometown in Nazareth as He preaches His first sermon, reclaiming Isaiah's vision of Jubilee justice and proclaiming the good news for the people, for the poor, freedom for of prisoners, sight for the blind, and liberation for the oppressed. Jesus both inaugurates and is the peaceable kingdom. Jesus, how we need you now, on the streets of Minneapolis and L.A. and Omaha and Lincoln. Throughout his ministry and anointed by the Holy Spirit, Jesus proclaimed and performed the loving justice of God in his compassion for the least of these, the sick, the marginalized, the poor. Jesus shows humanity that the way of holiness is treating other people's needs as holy. Jesus models compassion, equity, and justice making through his life for the other, culminating in a crucifixion on a Roman cross and being raised to new life by, yes, the Spirit. And after his resurrection, Jesus stayed with his disciples for 40 days, teaching them about the kingdom, asking them to wait for the Father's promised Holy Spirit. And as the Spirit had fallen on His own Jewish flesh in the Incarnation, it would now fall universally on the early Jewish movement, His followers, empowering them to be witnesses from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth, as the Gospel of Matthew says. Pentecost. The 50th day of Easter would be the template for the Christian movement. Those gathered in Jerusalem were filled with the Spirit, and every language was represented. And so the Jesus movement would become a movement that was led by the Spirit, a movement that was indeed multicultural, multilingual. And like Jesus, the Spirit would lead this new movement to embody the very justice of Jesus Himself. In today's Gospel reading from Matthew, Jesus gives the Great Commission and says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am always with you. How is Jesus always with us? Now the word Trinity doesn't occur in the Bible. But the concept of Trinity, God, Jesus, Spirit, does. In fact, it occurs in 23 verses of the New Testament. And one of those is in today's lesson from 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. You've heard that before in benedictions, I'm sure. I think the Trinity is a helpful expression of faith for us. I think it's helpful because the Trinity expresses connection. My baptism and my call into ordained Christian ministry were two powerful experiences. 
I felt the energy of God in those times through my faith in Jesus Christ. And the way that I understand or conceive of this energy is to name it Spirit. I believe in the connection of God. The connection of God to Jesus and to Jesus to the Holy Spirit and this life-giving power poured out and expressed in the lives of believers and in the community that we call church. As Jesus was called by God and empowered by Spirit, so we are called by Jesus and empowered by Spirit to share our lives helping other people, to heal the brokenness of life we see around us, and to build true community, whereas people, no matter what language we speak or what color we are, that we are connected in community. A community that is multicultural, multilingual, and multiracial. Church in this time of COVID-19 and sheltering in place to stop the spread of the coronavirus, we are discovering more about our longing for connection. We all want to be here in this place as soon as it's safe. These last two weeks of the horrific killings and the violence and the nonviolent protests that we have seen around us have reinforced the truth that we also live in a society that still bears great divisions among us. And people are longing for a peaceful connection to each other and a connection to a greater power to help us through this time. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Spirit of justice, move us forward toward a new creation. The peaceable kingdom of Jesus Christ that transformed the old into the new and life out of death. Through the energy of the Spirit, the church is called to be this new creation, God's shalom, a community of universal love and respect and an example of justice in every time. Come, Spirit, come. We gather here around the table, the table where we remember Jesus Christ who said, I am with you always to the end of the age. Here at the table, we remember Jesus and we remember that Jesus is with us always. Through the bread and through the cup, we remember Jesus and his sacrifice of life for us. And through Jesus' commandment, we remember who Jesus is. So let us move to this table so that we can move out to witness our lives in connection with Jesus our Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, send now your blessing upon this bread and this cup. Send your life-giving spirit upon your church. In this meal, help us to experience true connection, connection to God, through Jesus our Christ, and connection to the wider faith community and world. 
May this bread and this cup, O oh God, become for us the life of Christ within us. And as we partake of the elements of wine and bread, fill us with the Spirit that we might be one body in Christ. This we pray. Amen. We remember that it was on that night that Jesus would be delivered to his death, that he met around the table in an upper room in the city of Jerusalem. He met with his disciples, and at a meal he took bread, he blessed it, and broke it. And gave it to his disciples and said to them, Take and eat. This bread is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to God for this cup. And then he gave it to his disciples and said to them, Take, drink from this cup, all of you. This cup is my life, and my life I pour out for you and for the world. In remembrance of the sacrificial act of giving, the giving of his life, we drink from this cup and remember. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. This ends our time together today, and we wish for you the peace of Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Spirit to accompany you each day. Go in peace.